Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today I want to talk a little bit about the recent claims made by an Oxford doctor that state he believes aliens are interbreeding with humans to create a new hybrid species that will save our planet. Check out this article I found on the New York Post's webpage dated April 27th. I will link to the full article in the description so you can go and check the whole thing out for yourself. The title reads, Oxford Professor Believes Alien-Human Hybrid Species Will Save Earth. The Oxford doctor that they're referring to is this man, Dr. Young Hei Chi. Now, right off the bat, the article starts with a jab at Dr. Young's credibility by stating, The search for signs of intelligent life in the universe may have to skip Oxford University. It then continues by stating, A spacey professor at the austere British institution claims bug-like aliens walk among us and says they're having very close encounters with humans, interbreeding to create a new hybrid species that could one day save Earth from climate change and other disasters. The doctor claims that these aliens share the biosphere with us, and that they are not helping us out of a sense of altruism, but rather out of a sense of self-preservation. And he even wrote a book about the topic titled, Alien Visitations and the End of Humanity. The doctor claims that these aliens are revealing themselves now because of the threat of nuclear weapons and climate change. The doctor says, judging by the way the ETs are acting, they have a better view of our future. Perhaps it is pointing to a pessimistic future. It may be more or less assumed that the hybrid project is a response to this impending demise of human civilization, the doctor further said. He also claims that there are four types of aliens living amongst us. Small, tall and bold, aliens with scales and snake eyes, and finally insect-like. The doctor claims that the insects rank the highest on the totem pole and boss around the others. And he also claims that they didn't originate very far from us, and that despite their primitive appearance, these ETs are highly intelligent, as are their human offspring and therefore are the only creatures smart enough to tackle planetary problems such as climate change and nuclear disaster. Which begs the obvious question, why do they even need us if they're that smart? The doctor has three theories. Either they find human DNA valuable for preserving their species, or they want to create a species that can survive future climate calamities, or they are trying to produce an intelligent future leader. In closing, the doctor states that he's searching everywhere under the sun to support his theory, but he still needs more evidence to support his view. The story was also covered by other news agencies. The Evening Standard, The Sun UK, Daily Mail, and News Hub all covered this story as well. And I will put links to those articles in the description as well. So if you guys want to go check those out after watching this, go ahead. Now I gotta tell y'all, I'm pretty skeptical of what this guy is saying just because his claims are so outlandish. But I am trying to keep an open mind until I see all of the evidence for myself. So let's find out who this doctor is. According to the Oxford webpage, Dr. Young Hae Chi is an instructor in Korean at the Oriental Institute located at Regents Park College. His research interests are in instructional technique in the acquisition of modern languages, Christianity in Korean religious culture, dialogue between ethics, politics, and Christianity, North Korean refugee problems, and the role of NGOs. His current projects are the comparison of regional dialects in North Korea and the change of language habit in the case of North Korean refugees and the adaptability of UK educated Korean children to the contemporary culture and the school system of South Korea. He teaches courses in Korean for non-specialists 
advanced Korean reading for Master of Studies and other research students, non-intensive Korean, and finally, Korean for Social Science. It sure looks to me like the doctor has a lot of credentials in the linguistics and social arenas, but I'm not quite sure what he's doing talking about aliens and breeding. This is confusing. I did find a piece where the doctor was speaking at a conference back in 2012 about alien abductions and cross-hybridization. Let's take a look at a few of those clips. Well, the main thing I want to say is perhaps human civilization is coming to an end. Uh, I said perhaps. Uh, there's nothing certain really in this area. He made two arguments, very important arguments, in relation to alien abduction. The first one is the primary purpose of abduction is to produce hybrids, human-alien hybrids. And the second one is the primary purpose of this hybrid project is to colonize the Earth. Aliens produce hybrids not only between themselves and humans, but also between these alien-human hybrids and humans, uh, human. These second generation hybrids look quite similar to humans and it is quite difficult to distinguish them from ordinary humans. Some of the second generation hybrids behave quite nastily, so they are likely to be fitting for some nasty purpose. Abductees have their ovum or sperm routinely extracted and um, they are also often involved in sexually oriented actions with aliens or even with other human abductees on board under the influence of mind control by aliens. And particularly female abductees frequently find themselves with unusual symptoms of pregnancy and often find their fetus stolen without knowing exactly when it happened, when it happened, how it happened and why it happened. When in human history a superior civilization, techno uh, civilization, met an inferior one, uh, the usual outcome has been domination and subjugation. Yes, he's right. But can we really apply experiences from human history to an interstellar or interdimen interdimensional experience? Even in modern times, the pre-Second World War encounters usually involve visual sightings rather than physical abduction. And so I believe the phenomenon of abduction belongs almost exclusively uh, to the post-Second World War period. There are a few records of contact with uh, aliens in the pre-1945 period, but we rarely hear that human-alien encounters involved any forms of genetic engineering. So we can say that although alien visitation predates the 20th century, the phenomenon of abduction and the hybrid project largely uh, belongs to the post-Second World War period. Why did aliens, we can ask, embark on abduction and hybrid project only in the latter half of the 20th century? What I suggest here is that they started it as a response to the rapidly uh, aggravating environmental condition of this planet. To show why I think so, I will first explain climate change, the threat that warning about the Earth's environment, impending demise of human civilization. A UN intergovernmental uh, panel on the global climate change, the global surface temperature rose before the last 50 years, it rose as twice high as that. Many natural systems are very seriously being affected. Recently, it is increasing uh, even faster. Droughts have become more intense and longer over wider areas since the 1970s, while hot days, hot nights, and heat waves have become more frequent. Increase in intense tropical cyclone activity. There has been a rapid climate change in recent times, and that it has been putting tremendous stress uh, on the planetary ecosystem. And this is exactly the time when alien intervention in human affairs began in an unprecedented scale. People started to report UFO sightings around the world from this time on.
Well, that was interesting. The first part was about aliens and hybrids and colonization. But it is a theory posited by David Jacobs. Dr. Young was working on the premise that Mr. Jacobs was correct and contributed the theory that alien abductions began in the 1940s and were part of an alien program to build a genetically superior human-alien hybrid for one reason or another. Then in the last part, the doctor was talking about climate change as a reason for the aliens to choose now to do this hybridization. It sure does seem to me that there's more to this story than first met the eye. Initially, it seemed that Dr. Young was just an innocent crackpot. All of these recent news reports appear to be based on the 2012 lecture that the doctor gave. However, most of the comments that were attributed to Dr. Young were actually made by David Jacobs, or at least Dr. Young repeating David Jacobs' theories. This makes me wonder, why are these newspapers running articles based on seven-year-old information? Is this some sort of an organized smear campaign targeting the doctor? And if so, why? If the doctor is just an innocent crackpot, then why all the sudden media attention? It just seems strange to me. What do you all think? I'll put a link to the 2012 lecture in the description of this video. It's just over an hour long, but it is a good watch, and it gives you a little bit of insight into what the doctor is thinking. I wonder if the doctor's on Facebook. Oh, Facebook, you could have been an agent of good and connected the world and allowed us to start talking about our problems. But instead, you're an agent of money, and you've become the world's largest advertising company. What a pity. Oh look, the doctor's actually on Facebook. And he made a post last year. In that post, the doctor is trying to organize a debate at his university on the topic of, are extraterrestrials visiting the Earth? Yes or no? And it looks like he tried to get Hillary Clinton and maybe John Podesta to come speak at it. However, it appears that the university declined to fund the debate. And I'm not surprised by that, because I imagine that Podesta and Hillary Clinton probably have a pretty large speaking engagement rate. But the more I really look into Dr. Young, the less I think that he's some kind of misinformation shill, or just somebody who's trying to pander his new book sales. I know in the ufology community, there's plenty of people who are willing to sell out for a dollar. But I just don't think Dr. Young is one of those people. I believe that he is engaging in good faith, theoretical thought experiments. And people should be encouraged to partake in these discussions, not discouraged. In any case, I'm going to reach out to the doctor in an email and see if he'd be willing to talk to me. If I get any further information on this subject, I'll make sure to do a follow-up video and let you all know what I discover. But for now, that's all I have on the Oxford professor and his claims that aliens are interbreeding with humans. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503, and I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.